hello again. Uh, I think myself and my colleague, uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar, uh, we've really, uh, really, we've not really been uh, quarreling or being, you know, sort of uh, very possessive with one another as far as this new emerging territory of DAVR is concerned. You know, as a clever interventional cardiologist, they are doing very well in percutaneously intervening in especially the high-risk categories. And we surgeons have been carrying on the trend that has been going on for more than 50 years from uh, the post you know, Hofnackel era, as we say, who put the ball valve in the descending aorta. So we've been going around uh, putting in aortic valves uh, for quite a few decades now. Uh, Dilip, you know, uh, I would really uh, want to ask you that I think, you know, the probably the either euphoria on one side, the interventional euphoria on one side, the surgical anger on the other side, I think we are a little bit beyond that stage in Tavern at this point. Uh, so do you think that the water has settled? Uh, and in your clinical practice, you probably uh, hold one of the highest experiences of travel in this region, in this part of the world. So roughly, how are you placing yourself clinically right now? In your case selection. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, tower has proven itself uh, over, uh, you know, last decade. And uh, what we have seen the... Uh, outcome in high risk population than intermediate risk and low risk. If we choose our, our patients correctly, the results are going to be outstanding. So the idea is to choosing the patient well. There have been some voices uh, which were, uh, you know, uh, which were there since, uh, you know, earlier days of tower therapy is how the valve will behave in future, so valve durability. As these valves has got some different treatment, it has to be trimmed and uh, the thickness of the valve is lesser than the biological surgical valves which have been put in. Is 0.43 millimeter in surgical valves, and uh, the uh, tower valve is only 0.25 millimeter. So it, it, it has to uh, be, uh, be at the same stress and strain and tension of uh, being that uh, there at aortic valve. So how uh, you know in future it behaves? And although we have uh, the only randomized control trial in form of motion trial which we have, which uh, evaluated the self-standing valve with the surgical valve, and they found. It they found no difference at eight years, rather the uh, tower valve at a better place. But nowadays there is a there is a, a trial has come which shows some simulation method, and uh, they have shown that it is uh, the tower valve is 70 percent less durable, something kind of that sort of idea than surgical valves. So, so you know, uh, I'll tell you something that you know since we have been in this uh, prosthetic valve business a little bit longer than you people. I've had my concern, not, this is not concerning the method of implantation. To make it brief, my concern has been that I don't know what do people tell you when various uh, companies, various valve manufacturers uh, enthusiastic about the tissue valve segment came up and told us. You see, we were made to believe a kind of uh, uh, a take-home message of around 15 years for a durability of tissue valve. I'm not bringing in tavern into it. Now, I've probably been putting tissue valves in patients for a good part of last 25 years in this country now. I'll tell you the little one thing, that uh, I, I wish we had more uh, reproducible data, but I think in many a times we do not get to the 15-year-old mark. That's point number one. Point number two is that look, even in our country today, we believe that people, uh, especially the maybe the urban population or even the rural population, a life expectancy of 70, 75 years is not a very unusual happening. Similar <coughs> conversation went on in the United States when perhaps about seven, eight years before, from the from California, Goldstein uh, published his series, and you know, uh, we were we were a little bit on the back foot with the mechanical valves, the use of anticoagulants, and the problems of anticoagulants, etc. So, in summary, Goldstein, going back almost a decade, had said 
that reoperation is a risk factor. And he said that even in the in the age group, I don't think he was playing around with percent uh, metallic bands in the very age, probably in the 50 to 60 age group. That um, the relief from the risk of reoperation was significant. And what you said was ever so important. That you know that the the, the valves have become thin. The valves are undergoing crimping. So I think it is a very pragmatic question to ask. That we are looking at life expectancy on one side. One side. We are looking at the risk of reintervention on the other side. We are looking at the prosthetic durability on the other side. So I think that, you know, since TAVR is happening in such, such large numbers right now, I think maybe in India the numbers are a little smaller, but it will get larger. But even in the international perspective, it's a kind of multivariate look at things. That how does a relatively, say, healthy 70-year-old stand? Where does he stand? His life expectancy, anticoagulation, vis-a-vis -vis the value. Where do you think now? Because I don't know, say, tell me something that when you uh, try to filter out the data about re-valve procedures, say re tavern or valve and valve, in patients who've been, say, 10 years plus, 8 to, eight to 10 years plus, after the primary tavern procedure, where does that stand? Right, sir. So if we look at a valve, uh, we va life expectancy of less than 10 years, means a patient is more than 80 years, then there is no question. Look, that's a very contentious yeah. statement. The life expectancy, I don't know how the Japanese manage it. Their average life expectancy is 87 years. In the island of Okinawa, 20% of people live 100 years. Yeah. So how would you be managing yeah. that age? Yeah. Roughly more than 80 years, if we, uh, yeah. especially uh, true for our our country. Our country. Yes. Yeah. So there is there is no uh, you know uh, point of uh, you know uh, contention, but uh, those who are between 65 to 80, they still both the grounds hold true. So a surgical valve is a transfer valve, and then it has the surgical risk has to decide the thing. Although we have evidence, and there is a common misconception between uh, many of us that. Low risk patients means younger patients. So to put it uh, you know, in point. right context, yes, that, that's uh, a valid point. Put it in right context. The average age of patients who were, who were there in uh, partner three was 73 years. So the 73 years was the mean age group of patients who were enrolled in partner three, where we tell that low risk patients all uh, benefit more with tower than surgical van. So it, it it has to be more than 65 years or 70 years before we think that classifying these patients to surgical risk groups. And then less than 65 years, there is no way uh, we should be venturing into it until a patient comes up and says, no, this is the only option I want to intend to take. And that to be multiple times, you need to re-counsel them. Uh, and how is the, how is the valve and valve performance holding? So valve and valve performance, uh, since uh, the tower started uh, commercially available in 2011, yes. so uh, still the, we don't have much valve and valve patient in registry data with us or maybe uh, you know, robust data. Uh, but as a procedure, uh, it's 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 uh, not very uh, you know, risky, it's a safe procedure, provided we take into account the coronaries and uh, the uh, other problems. So the it at, 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 as of now, it seems reasonable. The data may tell us in the next five years, ten years time, then value all patients will go for five, ten years how they, they are behaving. Yeah, I think you know once again, as we discussed with other topics and other subjects. I think even for our patient population, even in our cities, even in our urban and non-urban group, I think it, it will require a mixture of experience and wisdom to decide how we are going to approach the 60 to 65 year old age group who are otherwise in a moderate state of health and is needing an uh, aortic valve procedure. So, the mechanical valve should be the first option given to patients. I, you know, perhaps, perhaps. Yes. And uh, another myth, you know, which, uh, not even a myth, I think it definitely was reality, say two decades back when we were a pretty greenhorns working on the job, 
that over the period of two decades, our compliance of uh, medication and anticoagulation has improved a little bit. What do you think? Yes. I think mm -hmm. it has. People have become more aware. People have become more alert. And we have better heart failure therapy. We have better heart failure therapy. therapy. So let's see. You know, I think all of us will have to be very astute and very wise in selecting patients for procedures. Uh, but uh, once again, you know, TAVR is here with all its promise. And we must be using the procedures judiciously in proper cases. Thank you for being with us.